Good morning, Monet. You want to sound check? Good morning. Can you hear me? Yeah, sounds good. Great. Thank you. And we have some other attendees. Uh, if there is any member of an applicant team that would like a sound check, you can raise your hand within Zoom and we can get your sound check. Good morning, Andy. Uh, let me know if you'd like a sound check. Kimberly, I'm going to uh, mute myself and join you in a moment. I'm finishing up a call. Sure. Thank you. Okay, uh, Kimberly, I'm going to turn on my video to do a video test. Um, Looks good. Okay, here we are. Um, so we have a little more than 10 minutes before we start. And yeah. uh, I will announce the withdrawal of the um, use permit for the for the uh, side yard fence. And I think that's it. We had a couple, wait, 
we lost one of the, one of our attendees. Maybe they had a connection issue. One of the uh, applicants. I don't know. Okay. Well, I'll, I'll make the announcement regarding. Um, I forget the name of the address. It's on um, Parkhurst. Yes. It's. Uh, uh, let's see. It's, uh, item three point two. Okay. Right. Should be on on the screen. All right. Okay. Um, everything looks in order. I'm going to mute myself. Okay. Uh, do, we've got the Teams channel going if any side conversation needs to happen. Okay. Thanks. Just want to let our attendees know that uh, we have a call-in option. You can dial 888-475-4499 and enter our Webin ID, webinar ID, which is listed on the screen here, 
we have just a couple minutes more before we're going to get started. And uh, if any of our attendees are a member of an applicant team and you'd like to do a sound check, you can raise your hand within Zoom. Mr. Perry, you should have a prompt. And if you answer the prompt, you should be able to speak. Test one, two, three. Sounds great. Thank you. If you want to go ahead and control your meeting settings, then we won't have to go through that uh, back and forth. So if you want to mute yourself whenever you aren't speaking, that'd be great. Thank you. Good morning, this is Andy Gustafson. I am the zoning administrator and I'd like to call to order the December 17th meeting of the zoning administrator. Um, I'd like to welcome all of you uh, here today. We have uh, three items on the agenda. One item was uh, withdrawn, that is item 3.2. It concerned a uh, fence permit for uh, a fence located at 5120 Parkhurst. And I'll, uh, I'll, I'll remind everybody again, but I wanted to let you know that at the onset, if you're attending this meeting, that matter has been withdrawn by the applicant. Before, before I go further, I want to um, let you know that this meeting is a virtual meeting as a result of the provisions of the governor's exec executive orders, which suspends certain requirements of the Brown Act and also the order of the health officer of Sonoma County to shelter in place to help to spread the, uh, to help to reduce the spread of COVID-19. Uh, today, those of you who are attending uh, by Zoom and can see this uh, video, uh, will, I want to advise you that when it comes time during the public meeting where I invite public comment, you can do so uh, by raising your hand using the Zoom icon button or, or symbol. Uh, those of you who are calling in by telephone, you can uh, also comment, but you must press star nine. Uh, star nine will allow us to recognize you and you'll be able to, to get, um, uh, be able to comment. So before we, um, oh, and I also want to say that this meeting is live streamed at uh, www.youtube.com city of Santa Rosa. Um, that will be a recording if you wish to return to the to review certain sections of this meeting. So with that uh, preliminary introduction, now I'd like to begin 
um, with our agenda. And the first item on, on um, the agenda is a, uh, a public comment uh, portion, which allows any of those uh, of you who wish to comment on a matter not on the agenda, you may do so now. And uh, again, uh, please don't comment on something that we'll be discussing later on. Uh, I'm going to look here to see if we have anyone who um, wishes to do so, and I see none. So let's move on to our regular scheduled agenda. So when we go through these uh, next two items, each of the um, items will be presented by the project planner, and then the project applicant will have opportunity to comment. And after that, I will recognize any member of the public who wishes to comment. And again, remember to raise your hand or press star nine and you'll be recognized and allowed to speak in turn. So with that, um, I would uh, like to introduce the item 3.1. It's a minor landmark alteration permit for 920 McDonald Drive. And Adam Ross is the project planner. Adam, can you give us your presentation, please? Yes, thank you, Mr. Zoning Administrator. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and share my screen with uh, the PowerPoint slide. And just to, for after the, the presentation, we have Mark Perry uh, as the applicant and as well as the property owners who are also, obviously the applicant for this project are here to answer any questions after that. Thank you. Can you confirm that you see the uh, the presentation on the screen? It comes in clear. Great, thank you. Uh, so the project before you is is a uh, minor landmark alteration permit, uh, file number LMA 20-009 at 920 McDonald. The project itself um, includes a, um, a uh, uh, Sorry. It's the repair of the main dwelling in its front porch. So it's it's um, there's some things that have that have happened over time that have taken it away from from what it was, and and they're just basically bringing it back to that um, same um, that same aesthetic um, using as close to materials as possible. Um, it, they're demolishing. There's an existing two story structure in the back, um, as you can see in this gray area. Uh, and they're demolishing that and replacing it with a new two-story accessory structure um, with a carport and an ADU. So the carport's in the front right here. It's kind of shown. You can see it right here. Um, there's the. It's more of like a storage space for the uh, for the for the property owner. And the ADU is a staircase above on the second story of this new structure. The zoning is PD. 0005-H within the McDonald Preservation Historic District. As you can see the highlighted um, parcel here, there's the, the structure to be demolished uh, in the back. Um, the general plan land use designation is low density residential. Essentially all setbacks and, and um, uh, general plan, uh, the projects complies with all setbacks and, and um, the general plan land use designation. Um, the scope of work uh, here, as you can see here, there's the uh, new siding to match um, this little kind of gated area. They're, they're enclosing it to look more like this area on the right side. So you see this kind of mesh type material, they're matching it to the, to the right side. Um, same, same here under the stairs and just making the stairs uh, um, up to code and safer for the occupants themselves at the site. Um, then here's the existing structure. Uh, Mark Perry uh, per, is the um, historical, uh, uh, the architectural historian who provided the historic resource report um, for for this project for the context of this project. Uh, in that report, he claimed uh, he uh, concluded that the accessory unit in the back is is unremarkable and it doesn't really hold any um, historic value um, and therefore is not um, subject to any sort of um, 
uh, and therefore, you know, this this project complies with the Department of Interior standards for uh, historic structures, since this is not one. Um, here's just some more uh, elevations uh, of the existing structure. So it's abutting the alley in the back. Here's the alley. Um, and here's the elevations. Um, there's only really uh, one um, bit of, of redo for, for these plans. Uh, as you can see, they're, it's, a, it's not colored, but it's a, it's a pretty nice uh, structure overall. And it kind of matches the existing uh, home. And you know, it's, in, it's uh, in line with the design of, of a lot of the, um, the barn, or I should, I'll let Mark Perry get into that more, but it's in line with the, the accessory structures throughout the neighborhood. Um, the carport's right here. The doors, um, the doors provide enough space for the, you know, for the uh, um, the covered parking to be unobstructed per code. Um, here's the entrance for the ADU unit above, um, and the uh, balcony and, and living roof is facing internally towards the existing home. And this is an entrance to kind of the storage space that's proposed. Some side elevations, um, again, just for context a little more. Um, it is noted that ADUs are not subject to um, any sort of ministerial, um, uh, I'm sorry, are not subject to any discretionary actions. And that this is more for the accessory uh, structure on the first floor um, and how it uh, coincides with the existing home and preservation district. With that, uh, the Planning and Economic Development Department recommends that the Zoning Administrator by resolution approve a minor landmark alteration permit for the property located at 920 McDonald Avenue in Santa Rosa. And I'm available for any questions you may have. Thank you, Adam. Um, again, this is a minor landmark alteration for uh, the replacement of the existing accessory structure, as well as a repair work on the front yard, and none, no uh, discretionary review regarding the ADU or the um, location size of the accessory structures required here. Correct. All right, so now I invite the applicant or the applicant's um, representative to comment add to presentation if they so wish. Please raise your hand and you'll be recognized. Go ahead, Mr. Perry. Well, thank you very much, Andy and Adam for your um, presentation and your presence here today. Andy, um, Adam, I'm not sure if you can call up that front um, elevation of the house briefly. Um, if you can still share that screen. Yeah, just, I'll do it right now. We'll, and I'll... then we're also going to go on to the front elevation of the ADU. Um, I just want to summarize the uh, approach and the intent of the design. Although ADUs are do not fall, uh, they are, un, I guess you call them discretionary. Um, our applicants are very conscious of and have long standing roots in the preservation, uh, I guess, community of Santa Rosa. And they really wanted to do the right thing all the way through this. If we look at that front elevation, we are basically restoring and repairing the existing front entry in that those stairs are actually, uh, messed up, so to speak. They're falling apart. They need to be rebuilt um, and they need to be consistent rises and runs or they're just not safe. Other than that, we're just cleaning up the front elevation, making the finishes, uh, restoring finishes that may have been removed and replaced with other materials at some point due to rot or other situations. So the, pre, the look of that is not really gonna change to any of the neighbors as they drive by. It's gonna, when after this work is done, it's gonna look just the way you see it now, only 
uh, better, so to speak, that, yeah, there'll be changes on the, on the screening and the deck will change and the risers are going to be consistent, but you won't see changes in the handrail. Um, so if we go on to now the ADU, um, yeah, that other one back up the front. This is clearly unremarkable um, and pretty consistent with uh, the, I think it was probably built in the 20s or 30s thereabouts. Um, and it was built by reclaimed materials, uh, many reclaimed materials. That happened a lot in the early uh, 20th century and uh, late 19th century. The uh, use of former materials are just not, not as available. They didn't have as much um, of the engineered materials, which make them more stable. You can see that it is uh, degraded in many ways, uh, does not have any real historic continuity. Um, neither does it have uh, care, you know, strong character defining elements you might find in what we guess we could call a carriage house or a barn building. If we can move on to the next slide, the next elevation set of the new building. Um, the legislature mandated, so to speak, that, and you can correct me, Adam, if I'm wrong here, that ADUs don't, um, they're kind of streamlined, but our, uh, our applicants wanted to uh, maintain uh, as much as possible design integrity. And I would say, even though it isn't necessarily required, in many respects, this does meet the Secretary of the Interior's standards of care for the treatment of a rehabilitation or perhaps even a reconstruction. You can see the elevation is very consistent with the previous elevation. It actually emulates the character, although the materials are somewhat different. Those materials are historically appropriate. The Secretary requires that the new buildings or contemporary additions or, or rehabilitations be actually um, distinctive. So this is not, and the um, kind of contemporary railing and uh, canopy over the double doors to the left of that dormer window um, makes it not a what they try to avoid, and that is, um, you know, a, a false facadism or a false historicism. Um, I, it's kind of a pretty simple thing. It works well. It works in the neighborhood nicely. Um, I think it would be a con contribution rather than a detriment to the McDonald district. And this is probably, golly, I don't know, maybe the 15th project I've been involved in. Um, this not as a consult, not designer, simply consultation, but that consultation helped steer. And I believe our project designer was sympathetic and uh, responsive and cared that this come out as nicely as it did. And I'm, I'm glad to encourage it to be approved. Thank you for your time. Thank you, Adam, so much for your ongoing involvement and excellent uh, help in this. And thank you, Andy, for your time today. And thank our applicants for the opportunity to add something to the McDonald District that will help it out. Thank you very much. Uh, appreciate your comments. And um, uh, I have no questions. I think as you described, it's a pretty straightforward um, approach and clear project description. So I appreciate your comments. Um, now it's time that I offer the opportunity for any interested party, a neighbor or another member of the public who wishes to comment. If you wish to do so on this matter, please raise your hand and uh, we'll be recognized. Thank you. Seeing none, I will close the public meeting portion of this item and uh, commence uh, on the action. All right, so um, what I normally do at the onset of the meeting is I, I explain that any matter that is acted on today may be uh, appealed by any aggrieved party and uh, so today being the seventh, um, should anybody wish to appeal the determination of the zoning administrator today on this item or any other item on the agenda, I'm gonna look at the calendar, um, you would have until uh, December uh, 
the end of the day, business day, December 28th, that's a Monday, uh, to file a, an appeal. And if you wish to do so, uh, contact the project planner and they'll walk you through that process. All right. So um, I reviewed the, um, uh, the resolution and the findings prepared for this project. Uh, the, the, um, applic excuse me, the project planner recommended approval and uh, in consideration of the evidence presented here at the meeting and also by the planner and the project file, um, I think that recommendation can be supported and I approve the project. Um, I do want to comment here. It's always really welcoming to see um, property owners make investments such as this to particularly manage and keep up with our historic resources in our communities and our residential areas. So I, I applaud them for that. And further for um, going the, the next step and providing a, a ADU or accessory dwelling unit to provide more opportunities for uh, people to find housing in the city. So I'm very pleased to be able to approve this project. And thank you very much for bringing this forward. Um, so that concludes item number 3.1. Item 3.2, as I mentioned at the onset of this uh, meeting has been withdrawn. The owner withdrew their application. There will be no um, further discussion on this matter. Um, so if you should be in attendance uh, on this matter, uh, please know that uh, this there will be no discussion. So with that, um, I will move on to item 3.3, which is a conditional use permit for 125 Glenwood Court. And um, Monet Sikali is a project planner. And Monet, can you give your project presentation? Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Gustafson, and good morning. I'm going to share my screen in a few seconds. Okay, can you confirm that you can see my screen? Great, thanks. So the project before you this morning is a minor conditional use permit for a home occupation located at 125 Glenwood Court. This is a minor conditional use permit to provide private Pilates sessions from the main residence. Hours of operation will be 9 a.m. to 1 p.m. Tuesday through Saturday, maximum of 15 clients in a week. So basically three clients per day. Parking will be provided on site at the time. This is the location of the site, which is a single family residence, zone R16, and the general plan land use is medium density residential. The site contains one single family with a covered parking. Here is the floor plan for these residents and bedroom number two, show in a blue square, will be used for Pilates sessions. So a notice of this project was sent to neighbors within 600 feet and I did not receive any comments or concerns or questions regarding to the pro proposed project. This project also has been reviewed in compliance with California Environmental Quality Act and it qualifies for an exemption under section 15301. It is an existing facility. The the, session, the Pilates classes will be inside of the existing house with no expansion of the house. And with that, the Planning and Economic Development Department recommends that the zoning administrator by resolution approve a minor conditional use permit for the property located at 125 Glenwood Court. Below is my email and my phone number for anyone who wants to contact me directly. And that concludes my presentation. Thank you. Okay, finally found my button there. Uh, thank you, Manet. Um, I, I have no questions. I think your presentation and the accompanying resolution was clear. So now I, um, offer the opportunity for the applicant or their agent to comment. If you so wish, please raise your hand and you'll be recognized.
I don't think uh, I'll just give a moment more for uh, the sole attendee in attendance uh, to raise their hand, seeing that they do not wish to do so. I, um, I will now offer opportunity for the public who might be in attendance to raise their hand and comment. Okay, seeing none, I will close the public meeting portion of this item and um, take action on the requested um, recommended resolution for approval. Um, again, as I mentioned earlier, the resolution was very clear, making the findings supporting the issuance of this home occupation use permit, very supportable. Um, I think this is exactly the kind of use and activity that was envisioned that um, uh, is supported in our residential areas as a, as, as a home occupation. So with that, I will approve the requested permit and wish the applicant good luck. And, uh, and that concludes item 3.3 and that concludes the zoning administrator meeting of December 17th. And then signing off, I wish to offer uh, happy holidays for everyone and look forward to 2021. Goodbye.